Okay, y'all, this is a rant about a show that I've watched all four seasons of. I love to hate it. I watch it, but I love to hate it. I'm talking about Emily in Paris, everybody. Hit the like and subscribe button as the intro plays. As I told you, this will be a rant, so it might be all over the place, but I do want to say this. I cannot stand the lead, the namesake of the show, Emily, the woman who plays Emily of Emily in Paris. I can't stand her. Can't stand you! Incidentally, she's Phil Collins' daughter, Lily Collins, but I can't stand her. She may be great in other roles, but I can't stand her as Emily. I was telling my friend the other day, they need to unalive Emily and just keep the show going without her. I have some marketing strategies that I, I would love to discuss. Or either recast Emily. But, it, you know, it would be funny if they unalive Emily from the show that's named after her. So it would be like, a, you know, how they do their... They, they do their opening shots with like Emily in Paris, but they could do Emily in Paris and they put a, a cross out of Emily's name and it'd be like Mindy in Paris. Yes, bitch! Or Sylvie, who's already in Paris or whoever else. But I just can't stand Emily. I can't stand her. I can't stand Bowie Jane. She draws, she gets under my skin. Again, it's just her slinkiness, her prepubescent body, her pale skin, her big eyebrows, the the wrinkles in her eyebrows. And how about this? They try to play Emily like she's this young 25-year-old girl or so. She's in her 30s and she looks all of in her 30s, but with a prepubescent body. But and they try to play her like she's so fashionable and quirky when her clothes always look ridiculous on her and they wear her. The clothes are wearing her. I mean, she looks ridiculous in everything. Like she might wear long boots, then you see this big gap in the calves because she's so thin. But enough about her looks. She, as a character, is so annoying. She came, she came to Paris because her job needed her to go save the day at their partner agency. And she was annoying to the head of the agency, Sylvie, who's a French woman who's very elegant. They play her. You know, Sylvie actually grew on me because at first I didn't like Sylvie. I thought she was disheveled looking. But, you know, she grew on me. She's sort of like a Devil's Wears Prada character, except not as hardcore. But she wasn't feeling Emily at first because she's like, you American. Ugh. That's not black. That's off black. You Americans and your American ways coming over here trying to change things. But that's exactly what Emily does in every scenario, in every situation of her life on this show. She's trying to make Gabriel her neighbor, who she falls for in season one. She's trying to help him build up his restaurant. Gabrielle. Emily. Mindy, you're the chef here? And that's a good quality. It's just that... Emily is forcing herself on everybody. She's forcing her way of being, everything, on everybody. She drives me nuts. She drives me nuts. And I know somebody's saying, well, why you watch? That's what I said. Did I say that? Why'd you watch? Well, there are things about the show that I do like. I like the whimsy of the show. I like the scenery, the backdrop being Paris of the show. I like that. I mean, it's, it's it has a nice light feeling. It's a light show. And it has some comic relief. And it, it's reminiscent of the show that actually was created by Darren Star, who created this show, Younger. I mean, Darren Star is of um, 90210 fame. So he's known for doing those sort of shows, these light, light, fun shows. Because, I mean, the same problem I have with Emily in Paris is kind of the same problem I have with Younger. Younger is about a lady named Liza who's trying to get back into work. And she hadn't worked for 25 years because she was raising her daughter. So now she can't get a job in her 40s, which is common, especially these days. So she fakes like she's 25 when she looks all of 40. If anything, I may say she looked 38, but she doesn't look, which 38 and 40, they look the same. 
but Liza doesn't look 25. And the problem I have with that show is the ridiculous nature of it being, we think she's 25. And then the wardrobe on Younger. Like I have a problem with the wardrobe on Emily in Paris because they have Emily dressed so crazy and it's just ridiculous because those clothes wear her. I think I already said that. So I believe it's somewhere in season two that she meets this this black guy from London named Alfie. And Alfie's a really attractive guy, at least in my eyes. He's five foot four. I won't hold that against him, but he's still an attractive guy. I mean, in real life, he models. You go to his IG page, he models. I forget his name. It's something discount or something, something count. I forget. But, oh, Lucien Laviscount. That's his name. Um... He models, but you know, Emily is so wrapped up with this Gabriel guy trying to act like she's not. And Gabriel already has a girlfriend named Camille, Camille, and ugh, Camille is so annoying too. If I had my druthers, I would get rid of Gabriel, Camille, and Emily. What? And just start the show over or keep it with Mindy, her roommate, the singer. And, and just add some new people to the show because Emily's not working for me. So, you know, in season two, she and Alfie, they had a little rendezvous. They had like a little sexual tension between each other. And then finally they, they got together. And that was actually one of my favorite episodes, which you would think that I wouldn't like that episode because of other videos I've made about, you know, black men being obsessed with, um, with snow bunnies. But I mean, I actually like this whole, the scenario with Alfie and Emily, but you know what? In season three, Alfie couldn't hold Emily's attention because she was still stuck on stupid, stuck on Gabriel. Gabriel, who's dry as all get out, and he cooks. So what? He cooks. And the funny thing is, why do they all have to live in the same building? Like, later on, we see that Camille moves into the building with her, her lesbian lover. And then later on, Sophie... Sophie's um, boyfriend's daughter comes, and this is in season four, and she moves into the apartment. Why is that the only apartment in Paris? Oh my goodness. It's just so annoying, but I mean, I could stop watching, but again, it's something that I fall asleep to, or if I wake up in the middle of the night, I might watch it because it's just that light and stupid. But ultimately, I just can't stand Emily. I know, okay. And so, you know, she broke up with Alfie, and got back with Gabriel. And so in season four, she, um, she's, this is like, this is part two of season four. I forget what, you know, season four, three and four is about Sylvie and her people starting a new agency because the old agency played by the chick from Grey's Anatomy. She was annoying too. I forgot all about her, but I want to get to season four, which made me laugh. And my friend said, you just like your niece. You laugh at other people's pain. My niece with special needs, she always laughs when somebody falls. And her sister always says, you laugh at everybody's pain. So, okay. Emily had a tiff because Emily was supposed to go back to Chicago for Christmas. And her flight was canceled. And here's the thing. They did this whole um, product placement of Air France's um, lounge. Don't think I didn't catch that. But, you know, this is where Emily found out her, her flight was canceled. So then she called Gabriel. And they said, come on out. Gabriel is somewhere in the Alps with Camille and her family. Because Camille is supposedly pregnant. But Camille found out she's not pregnant. It was a false pregnancy. Uh, a false positive. Which that rarely happens. And so... Gabriel doesn't know this yet. So he invites Emily to come with Camille and her family. She already knows their family because she did this. Her family has a champagne line and she did the social media for that. Ugh. So here's the funny thing. So she and she was trying to get them to wear ugly, ugly Christmas sweaters. And, you know, these French people and they're like, no, we don't want that sweater. Get out of here. But she's always trying to push her way onto people. As if her way is the best way. Like, Emily, that is so whack. Everybody does. The ugly sweater thing is so played out at this point. They even make them in Walmart deliberately. So um, so here's the thing. Emily left because she and Gabriel, Gabriel left her on the slopes and she met this guy named Marcello. Marcello is this Italian guy. He'll come back later, but I don't even think I'll get to this because this video is getting too long. But this is what I want to say. She went back to Paris and she ran into... Um, 
Alfie outside of a church and Alfie's like, Koopa, Koopa, you, oh, how are you? Blah, blah. And she's like, oh my God, Alfie. But then he was like, I'm going to meet my girlfriend and her family in the church. You're meeting the parents. And he ran off and she started crying. I was laughing hysterically at three in the morning. <laughs> I don't know why I was laughing so hard at Emily. Because Emily finally got what she deserved. You dissed Alfie for this, this, I don't even want to say Gabriel. He's so dry as toast. And it's just their tension is just not interesting to me. But they're acting as if, oh my God, this, this love story between Gabriel and, and Emily so alluring that let's just throw everybody to the wayside. But you know, at the end, she gets with Marcello. And the funny thing is, Sylvie did something so foul. Emily went down to Rome to, you know, meet up with Marcello for a date. And Sylvie finds out that his company owns the largest cashmere company or something like that in Europe. So Sylvie decides to go down there and ruin Emily's date and pitch the business, which was foul because he didn't want any parts of it. But I thought that was funny because Emily got a taste of her own medicine. Anyhow, drop into the comments and tell me what you think about Emily in Paris. And am I going too hard on Emily in Paris? Let me know because I, I, I spent 10, almost 11 minutes talking about Emily in Paris. And once I edit in my little funny clips, it's going to be even longer. Like and subscribe.